Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Anubha Rohatki and with me is Lalima Aneja Dang with the Midday News. The headlines. Government releases national list of 384 essential medicines to ensure accessibility of affordable quality medicines. Eight people killed in a fire mishap in Sikandarabad. Prime Minister Narendra Modi announces excretion of 2 lakh rupees each to next of kin of deceased. CBI conducts searches at 33 locations over alleged irregularities in Jammu and Kashmir sub-inspector recruitment. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman asserts government will do everything for industry to come and invest, says a lot of companies are looking to move their manufacturing operations from China to India. India to host G20 leaders summit in New Delhi on 9th and 10th September next year under its presidency and in SAF Women's Football Championship India to take on Bangladesh in their last group league match in Kathmandu this evening The government has released 384 medicines under the National List of Essential Medicines NLEM The health minister Dr Mansukh Mandviya released the updated version of NLEM 2022 today at an event in New Delhi. Dr Mandviya said the NLEM plays an important role in ensuring accessibility of affordable quality medicines at all levels of health care. Dr Mandviya said these medicines will improve the quality of health care. He elaborated that the list has been formulated after extensive consultations with the stakeholders. Essential medicine list आज पब्लिश हो रहा है उसके आधार पर नेशनल फार्मा प्राइसिंग अथॉरिटी उसकी सीलिंग प्राइस तय करेगी और ये भी सीलिंग प्राइस के आधार पर उसमें एक व्यवस्था होती है कि जो एनएलएम लिस्ट में आ गई मेडिसिन उसकी प्राइस कोई कंपनी अपने हिसाब से नहीं बढ़ा सकती है लेकिन प्रति वर्ष डब्ल्यू पी आई होलसेल प्राइस इंडेक्स प्लस माइनस होता है तो उसके आधार पर उसकी प्राइस प्लस माइनस होती है यानी कि कोई मेडिसिन की प्राइस अनरिजनेबल बढ़ नहीं सकती ताकि गरीब मध्यम वर्ग सभी के लिए एफोर्डेबल मेडिसिन उपलब्ध हो सके डॉक्टर भारती पवार मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट सेड दैट अंडर द लीडरशिप ऑफ प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी द फार्मा सेक्टर इज ग्रोइंग शी सेड द नेशनल लिस्ट ऑफ एसेंशियल मेडिसिन विल गाइड एंड हेल्प द फार्मा सेक्टर टू वर्क इन टैंडम विद द डिमांड ऑफ द नेशन शी स्ट्रेस्ड अपॉन द नीड टू स्प्रेड अवेयरनेस अबाउट एंटी माइक्रोबियल रेजिस्टेंस Our correspondent reports the NLEM is a dynamic document and is revised on a regular basis considering the changing public health priorities as well as advancement in pharmaceutical knowledge. The National List of Essential Medicines was first formulated in 1996 and it has been revised thrice in 2003, 2011 and 2015. The NLEM 2022 contains 384 medicines as compared to 376 in NLEM 2015 the medicines have now been categorized into 27 therapeutic categories a new section has been added for medicines considered essential for supportive management of covid-19 the number of deaths in the sikandarabad fire accident has gone up to 8 two more persons have succumbed to injuries Hyderabad Deputy Police Commissioner North Zone Chandana Deepthi told our correspondent that six bodies have been identified and two more are yet to be identified. The incident occurred following an outbreak of fire in a showroom of an electrical vehicle bike and, uh, and spread upstairs where Hotel Ruby is located. At least 25 guests were in the hotel at the time of the incident. About a dozen people are admitted in nearby hospitals. Police have filed a case against the building owner. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced an excretion of 2 lakh rupees to the next of kin of those who lost their lives due to a fire in Sikandarabad, Telangana. In a tweet, Mr Modi said that 50,000 rupees will also be paid to each of the injured from Prime Minister's National Relief Fund. Mr Modi said he saddened by the loss of lives due to fire and expressed his condolence to the bereaved families. He also wished the injured recover soon. CBI is today conducting searches around 33 locations including at Jammu, Srinagar, Karnal, Mahindragarh, Rewari in Haryana, Gandhinagar in Gujarat, Delhi, Ghaziabad and Bangalore in an ongoing investigation of a case related to sub-inspector recruitment scam of Jammu and Kashmir. 
The agency is conducting searches at premises of Mr. Khalid Jahangir, former chairman Jammu and Kashmir Services Selection Board, that is JKSSB, and Mr. Ashok Kumar, controller of examination of JKSSB, some officials of Jammu and Kashmir Police, including a DSP. Last month also, the agency carried out searches at many locations and registered a case against 33 accused in the sub-inspector recruitment scam. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said that the government will do everything for the industry to come and invest in India. Speaking at the 15th edition of the Mind Mind Summit in New Delhi today, Mrs. Sitaraman said a lot of companies are looking to move their manufacturing operations out of China and want to come to India as they find policies are more attractive. She said foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investments are coming and countries abroad think that India is the right place for investment. A lot more companies moving out of China wanting to come because they find the policies a lot more attractive, not just the PLI, but overall the ecosystem is now far more facilitative of such companies coming out to locate themselves in India, if that is one of the things. The second, I think, no policy can be the end to itself. It's not as if we've given a solution and that's the end of the story. It keeps evolving as we go on. So that applies even to those industries which are coming into the sunrise sector for which we've given the policy support through an incentive. The Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, is taking out its Nabanna Chalo March, a rally in protest against the corruption by the ruling TMC government in West Bengal. The West Bengal police, however, has denied permission for the party's Nabanna Abhyan March to the state secretariat. The buses carrying BJP workers on way to Kolkata to participate in the march were stopped by the police in North 24 Parganas. The police has also put up heavy barricading at Hastings near the state government's new secretariat in the city ahead of the march. The march is led by senior party leaders including state party president Sukanta Majumdar, leader of opposition in West Bengal Assembly Suvendu Adhikari, union ministers Subhash Sarkar and Shantanu Thakur among others. In a setback to Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, 15 panchayat members of JDU in Daman and Deo have joined the BJP. In a tweet, the BJP said 15 out of 17 district panchayat members of JDU and the entire state unit of the party joined the BJP against Mr. Kumar's decision to leave the NDA. Earlier, some JDU leaders in Manipur and Arunachal Pradesh also quit the party and joined BJP. Home Minister Amit Shah today virtually inaugurated and laid the foundation stone for various projects of the Gujarat government worth 1200 crore rupees at the Mahatma Mandir in Gandhinagar. Addressing a function organized at Gandhinagar to mark the completion of one-year tenure of Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel, Mr. Shah said Gujarat is playing a key role in achieving the dream of self-reliant India. The minister said Gujarat accounts for 57% of country's total foreign investments in last year. He said the state also holds a 30% share of country's total exports. Mr. Shah also said that Gujarat has established a model of good governance for the country. Gujarat Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel reaffirmed the government's commitment to the welfare of people. Mr. Patel reiterated that the government is giving highest priority for taking development to the last mile. Road, Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari has said electronic vehicles and green fuels will be the key to India's growth story. Addressing the Mid Mind Mind Summit 2022 in New Delhi today, Mr. Gadkari said in recent times, electronic vehicles demand has increased. Today, the electric vehicle demand is increased by 500%. Even electric two-wheeler, in a, we have 250 startup, small startup making good electric scooters. So in due course of time, within a year, you will see the difference and there will be a lot of e-vehicles. Now don't want to purchase petrol or diesel car because by spending 25 to 30,000 rupees on petrol car and electric car, it is only 2,000 rupees and no pollution. Due course of time, we will get the alternative solution for lithium and battery that will reduce the cost and electric vehicle cost will be less than petrol and diesel vehicle. The day will come within one year or two years, 100% I am expecting that day that the cost will be reduced. Talking about the interlinkages between ecology and economy, the minister said that the work on 27 Greenfield Expressways will be 80 to 90 percent complete by the end of this year. Mr. Gadkari highlighted that the focus of the government is on seamless connectivity and reducing logistical issues. 
to ensure holistic development across different sectors. He added that through biofuels and tourism development, tribal and rural areas can become part of India's growth story. Mr. Gadkari emphasized that multilateral logistical solutions, including various transport mediums like waterways, railways and road transport, will boost the export market. He said that wholesale markets are being planned across the connecting points of peripheral highways and railways as a step in the direction. The minister said with strong investment environment and young engineering professionals powering the Indian tech sector, the Indian economy is well on its path to achieve Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of a $5 trillion economy. Skill Development Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has said that capacity building of trainers is critical to develop a vibrant workforce for the 21st century. He said the training institutes must reimagine and reinvent themselves with a comprehensive and futuristic strategy to strengthen the skills ecosystem. Mr. Pradhan said this while participating in the brainstorming session on reimagination of training institutes under the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship in New Delhi. The minister also stressed on the need to prepare 25 black trainers in the next three years. He added, the training institutes will be a hotspot in the endeavour to develop effective trainers who will play an important role in developing next-gen workforce. Mr. Pradhan said that technology is rapidly changing the world. From education to health, agriculture to finance, every sector is witnessing unprecedented developments triggered by technology. He said, this is creating new opportunities and the need for a new skills landscape. Gujarat government today signed a memorandum of understanding with Indian conglomerate Vedanta and electronics manufacturing giant Foxconn to set up a semiconductor and display FAB manufacturing unit in the state. The MOU was signed in the presence of Minister for Railways, Communications, Electronics and Information Technology Ashwini Vaishnav at a function held in Gandhinagar. Gujarat Chief Minister Bupendra Patel said that both the companies would invest 1,54,000 crore rupees to set up the facility in the state, which would create 1 lakh job opportunities. More than 215 crore 47 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been administered in the country so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. The health ministry said over 21,67,000 doses were administered in the last 24 hours. During the same period, 4,369 new COVID cases were reported in the country. The country's active caseload currently stands at 46,347 and it is at 0.1%. The recovery rate is currently at 98.71%. A total of 5,178 people have recovered in the last 24 hours and with this the total recoveries touched over 4 crore 39 lakh. The ministry said the weekly positivity rate stands at 1.73% and the daily positivity rate is at 1.25%. A total of more than 88 crore 99 lakh COVID tests have been conducted in the country so far. In the last 24 hours, around 3 lakh 50 thousand tests were conducted. While well, you are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio, here's a reminder of the headlines before we move on. Government releases national list of 384 essential medicines to ensure accessibility of affordable quality medicines. Eight people killed in a fire mishap in Sikandrabad. Prime Minister Narendra Modi announces excretia of 2 lakh rupees each to the next of kin of the deceased. CBI conducts searches at 33 locations over alleged irregularities in Jammu and Kashmir sub-inspector recruitment. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman asserts government will do everything for industry to come and invest says a lot of companies are looking to move their manufacturing operations from China to India. India to host G20 Leaders Summit in New Delhi on 9th and 10th September next year under its presidency. And in SAF, Women's Football Championship, India to take on Bangladesh in their last group league match in Kathmandu this evening. Well, for quick news updates on the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. और हमारे विशाल देश पर राज करने का स्वप्न देख रहे हैं हम इनके स्वप्न को चकना चूर कर देंगे निकल पड़े स्वाधीनता के मत वाले स्वतंत्रता संग्राम की सुनी अनसुनी कहानियों के साथ स्वराज 
हर रविवार रात नौ बजे डी नेशनल पर प्रतियोगी परीक्षाओं की तैयारी अगर कर रहे हैं आप तो ऑल इंडिया रेडियो की पेशकश अभ्यास है आपके लिए इस बार का विषय है एंशियंट इंडियन हिस्ट्री और आप अपने सवाल हमें 14 सितंबर तक व्हाट्सएप करें 9289094044 पर या फिर ईमेल करें अभ्यास डॉट ए आई आर न्यूज एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम आरोप आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास Welcome back to the Mid Day News. The government is gearing up for a mass cleanliness campaign on the International Coastal Cleanliness Day on 17 September. On the day, the 75-day long Swachh Sagar Surakshit Sagar campaign, which was initiated on the 5th of July this year, will also conclude. Addressing a press conference in New Delhi today, the Union Minister for Earth Sciences, Dr. Jitendra Singh, said, "With the help of the civil society, the government is working towards imbibing the spirit of oceanic cleanliness among the people." when all the other resources of value addition get saturated one huge resource which would still remain unutilized or underutilized in india is the ocean resource we have one of the longest coastal line 7500 km long we have an ocean called indian ocean named after this there is a lot of undiscovered property lying underneath huge economy value addition to india's 2047 status would happen from the ocean resource Dr Singh said on the 17th of this month the coastal clean up drive will be carried out at 75 beaches across the country with 75 volunteers for every kilometer of the coastline the three underlying goals of the swachh sagar surakshit sagar campaign are to consume responsibly segregate waste at home and dispose responsibly an estimated expenditure of about 10 crore rupees is envisaged for the campaign The Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation BMC has collected tons of floral waste known as nirmalya during the Ganesh festival in Mumbai. Instead of disposing of the waste on dumping grounds, the civic body will convert the floral waste into organic manure. Our correspondent reports the Navi Mumbai Municipal Corporation is also following in the footsteps and creating wealth from waste. BMC has collected more than 549 tons of nirmalya which consists of floral waste like flowers garlands leaves etc and this nirmalya will be used to produce organic manure this floral waste was collected from various wards of the BMC with the help of more than 6000 workers of BMC as well as some of the NGOs in Mumbai the organic manure will be ready within a month and it will be used as a fertilizer for the plants in BMC's various gardens navi mumbai municipal corporation is also implementing the idea of converting more than 38 tons of floral waste into fertilizer and some of the NGOs are also contributing in this initiative of creating wealth from the waste with Kunal Shinde Shailesh Patil AR News Mumbai India will host the G20 leaders summit at the level of heads of state and government on the 9th and 10th of September next year in New Delhi India will assume the presidency of the G20 for one year from the 1st of December this year to the 30th of November next year it is expected to host over 200 G20 meetings across the country here's more from a correspondent the G20 is an intergovernmental forum of the world's major developed and developing economies it comprises 19 countries including australia china france germany india italy japan south korea russia saudi arabia south africa uk usa and the european union collectively the g20 accounts for 85% of global gdp 75% of international trade and 2/3 of the world population making it the premier forum for international economic cooperation india is currently part of the g20 troika comprising indonesia italy and india During the presidency India Indonesia and Brazil will form the troika this will be the first time when the troika would consist of three developing countries and emerging economies providing them a greater voice with dipendra kumar this is anu sharma for air news delhi Indian and Chinese armies have stepped their troops back from the front line of the Gogra Hot Springs areas patrolling point 15 in the eastern Ladakh region the disengagement process was on for 5 days that included dismantling of the temporary structures and bringing the front line troops to the rear locations respectively by both the armies as per plan a joint verification of the process was also entailed by the two sides as they disengaged from the face off site on september the 8th 
both the sides announced beginning of the process. This entire disengagement at patrolling point 15 in the Gogra Hot Springs area followed after 16th round of high-level military talks between the two nations in the month of July. Over the past 75 years since independence, India's largest public service broadcaster, All India Radio, has been the proverbial storyteller for the 1.3 billion citizens across the country. All India Radio is celebrating 75 years of freedom with a series, Azad Bharat Ki Baat, Akashwani Ke Saath. It showcases the journey of India since independence in various walks of life through the storytelling of All India Radio. In today's episode, we bring you the story of economic reforms in India. The economic reforms in India in 1991 led to the liberalization of the economy and significant improvement in its growth rate. These reforms, started by the then Prime Minister Narasimha Rao, had three main objectives, liberalization, privatization and globalization. It is the future we have to think about, in fact, worry about. India has undertaken the first steps to shaping of our history for the next generation. After decades of centralized economic policies, India recently embarked on a reform program designed to modernize our economy, liberalize trade and realize our economic potential. We welcomed private investment and competition and encouraged free market growth. As a result, India is becoming globally competitive and the standard of living of our citizens is gradually on the rise. The momentum of these reforms will carry India into the next century as the single largest free market in the world. These reforms aimed to enhance the cooperation of the private sector and the growth of the Indian economy. Liberalization opened economic borders to foreign companies. From 2014, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government is striving to make India a $5 trillion economy. $5 trillion is a target that we have kept in front of us. For $5 trillion economy is not a big deal, but it is a big deal of making the people of the world a big deal of making the people. अर्थव्यवस्था दोगुनी होगी तो हर भारतीय परिवार की आय भी बढ़ेगी सामान्य से सामान्य भारतीय की परचेजिंग पावर भी बढ़ेगी फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर के इस पड़ाव तक पहुंचने के लिए हमारे पास पोटेंशियल भी है और प्लान भी है और पसीना बहाने की पूरी तैयारी भी है अकॉर्डिंग टू इंटरनेशनल मॉनिटरी फंड आई एम एफ इंडिया हैज ओवर टेकन द यू के टू बिकम द वर्ल्ड फिफ्थ लार्जेस्ट इकोनॉमी एंड इज नाउ बिहाइंड ओनली द यू एस चाइना जापान एंड जर्मनी मेक इन इंडिया एंड आत्मनिर्भर भारत इनिशिएटिव आर गिविंग मैसिव पुश टू कीप द कंट्री सेल्फ रिलायंट एज अ रिजल्ट जी डी पी इज स्टेडिली इम्प्रूविंग इन्फ्लेशन इज केप्ट अंडर चेक Employment generated and people's standard of living is improving tremendously. INS Satpura and PHI Maritime Patrol aircraft have arrived at Darwin in Australia to participate in multinational naval ex Kakadu hosted by the Royal Australian Navy. The two week long exercise, both in harbour and at sea, involves ships and maritime aircraft from 14 navies. During the harbour phase of the exercise, the ship's crew will engage in operational planning, interactions, and sports activities with participating navies. The 6th edition of Japan India Maritime Exercise 2022, JIMEX 22, hosted by Indian Navy, has begun in the Bay of Bengal on Sunday. The Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, JMSDF, ships are being led by Rear Admiral Hirata Toshiyuki, Commander Escort Flotilla 4, and Indian Naval ships by Rear Admiral Sanjay Bhalla, Flag Officer Commanding Eastern Fleet. JIMEX 22 involves two phases, exercises at sea and a harbour phase at Vishakha Patnam.
This edition marks the 10th anniversary of Jimex which began in Japan in 2012. It also coincides with the 70th anniversary of establishing of diplomatic relations between India and Japan. Jimex 22 seeks to consolidate the high degree of interoperability that exists between maritime forces of the two countries through complex exercises in the surface, subsurface and air domains. India has handed over the 12th consignment of humanitarian aid comprising essential medicines and equipment to Ukraine. The humanitarian aid is part of its ongoing effort to help the European nation to mitigate the economic hardships which is facing due to the conflict with Russia. Sharing a photograph of the handover, the Indian embassy in Kiev in a tweet said, Ambassador Harsh Kumar Jain handed over the humanitarian aid from India meant for people of Ukraine comprising essential medicines and equipment to Ukraine's deputy health minister Oleksiy Iraymenko. India has expressed its concern over the lack of any measurable progress by the Sri Lankan government on its commitment towards reaching a political solution on the Tamil issue. India's permanent representative to the UN in Geneva, Indramani Pandey, outlined India's position at an interactive dialogue on the office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights latest report on Sri Lanka. Mr Pandey said that India has always believed in the responsibility of countries to promote and protect human rights and constructive international dialogue and cooperation guided by the principles of the UN Charter. India said its consistent view on peace and reconciliation in the neighboring island nation has been for a political settlement within the framework of a united Sri Lanka. Mr Pandey also said the current crisis in Sri Lanka has demonstrated the limitations of a debt-driven economy and the impact it has on the standard of living. The Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan has claimed that 49 servicemen were killed as fighting between Armenia and Azerbaijan flared up again. Radio of Armenia said that the number is not final and may increase as fighting is still continuing in several directions. Armenia said that several towns near the border with Azerbaijan including Jarmuk, Goris and Kapan are being shelled today. However, Azerbaijan said it is responding to a build up of Armenian landmines and weapons near the border. The United Nations mission in Afghanistan has accused the Taliban authorities of intimidating and harassing its female staff working in the country. The UNAMA mission said the three Afghan female employees were recently detained and questioned by local armed security agents. The UN also asked the Taliban to stop their intimidation tactics targeting its Afghan female staff and reminded local authorities about their obligations under international law to guarantee their safety. However, the Taliban in a statement denied the women had been detained. The e-auction of 10 commercial coal mines will begin today. The Ministry of Coal had invited bids for coal mines for commercial coal mining. It said e-auction for 8 coal mines will be conducted today and for 2 coal mines tomorrow. The ministry said the total peak rate capacity of the mines being put up for e-auction is 39.31 million tons per annum. Coal Ministry has successfully auctioned 43 coal mines so far with PRC of over 85 million tons per annum. In the South Women's Football Championship Indian Eves will take on Bangladesh in their last group league match today in Kathmandu Nepal. The match will start at 5:15 p.m. Indian time. Indian women have already secured a semi-final berth after registering victories in their two matches. Bangladesh have also reached the semi-finals after winning their two matches. And now let us take a Take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. Minimum temperature was 25 degrees Celsius and maximum will be around 30 de- 36 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Chennai will have thunderstorm with rain. Minimum temperature was 27.3 degrees Celsius and maximum will be around 36 degrees. Kolkata will have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature was 24.7 degrees Celsius. And the maximum will be around 28 degrees jammu srinagar and muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night and leh and gilgit will have partly cloudy sky and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again government releases national list of 384 essential medicines to ensure accessibility of affordable quality medicines eight people killed in a fire mishap in sikandarabad prime minister narendra modi announces excretion of 2 lakh rupees each to the next of kin of deceased 
CBI conducts searches at 33 locations over alleged irregularities in Jammu and Kashmir sub-inspector recruitment. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman asserts government will do everything for industry to come and invest, says a lot of companies are looking to move their manufacturing operations from China to India. India to host G20 leaders summit in New Delhi on 9th and 10th September next year under its presidency and in SAP Women's Football Championship India to take on Bangladesh in their last group league match this evening. And with that, we end the Midday News.